In today's episode, woman doesn't understand the difference between IT and app development. A tale from my previous employer. Use cold water to clean that off. Before we get started make sure to subscribe so you will never miss a video. So let's get started. Woman doesn't understand the difference between IT and app development. I had studied for a few semesters for a Bachelor of Computer Science, but when Corona hit, I dropped out and started doing a traineeship for a company as an app developer. I was working for the company for four months now, freshly out of my probation which ended about a week ago. The app team of R&D has a big office with multiple workstations, and the office of the R&D head is right next door. I was the only one in that day, the rest having vacation or working from home, including the head, happily working on my project when the office phone rings. I look at the number and see that it is from another office phone from this location, the company operates worldwide, and I am in our HQ in Germany. I of course pick up since I am the only one present. R&D app team, OPM operat. Translation, op speaking. My laptop isn't working. I am confused for a moment since this was a German facility, but chalk it up to one of our non-German employees being here for some reason. And them calling me instead of IT was probably just a mix-up. I'm sorry, this is R&D, not IT. I can give you the number if you want. I know, no one is picking up there. Have you tried going there? It is in the basement of the main building. No, I have better things to do. You are working with computers as well, fix it. I am sorry, I am only a trainee, there is no one else in the office right now. So. I do not have the authority and probably not the knowledge to fix your laptop. After I finish there is a short pause and then the line is cut. I don't think anything about it and go back to work. Five minutes later a woman comes into the office and slams a laptop on my desk in front of me. Demanding I fix it, I reiterate that I don't really have permission to do anything, but can take a very rough look if she wants, but nothing more than she has permission to do really. She grumbles and logs in, immediately, I notice that she has around 70 Chrome tabs open on this laptop. I tell her that is most likely the problem if her computer is just running slowly. Her response is that it is never a problem in her office. I tell her that that is all I can do. A bit of back and forth that comes down to her not knowing the difference between IT and R&D, and she gets up and tells me that my manager will hear about this. I shrug because I know there is nothing that she can do to me. I can't get fired for not doing a job that isn't mine, and my probation period is over. As she leaves she immediately turns and barges into the office of the head of R&D, who is working from home. She stands still for a moment before glaring at me and telling me your manager will hear of this, and he will take action against you. Which in itself is funny because the R&D head is a woman. Once she is gone I inform my trainee supervisor of what just happened, he tells me I did everything right and can't face consequences. A day later the head tells me I handled the situation perfectly, my supervisor had informed her about 15 minutes before a mail from the woman came demanding I was punished. How can people not understand the difference between IT and app development? A tale from my previous employer. I happened to bump into a friend from the old days yesterday. I worked, and he still works, in a British government ministerial building, and he told me a tale of full lockdown back in 2020. They had a major shutdown nothing directly IT related, but an electrical fault that took away all power from the building. Theoretically when people aren't in is a good time for such a thing to happen as the servers move to immediately backed up servers elsewhere, if you work there, part of the plan is backups in case London is nuked. Decent backups. But there were interruptions to home workers working for about 20 minutes, which also meant that they couldn't log into the IT help desk to find out what is happening here. There is an option to log on via lead servers and, outside the IT department, only 5 out of 480 staff thought to do that. Only two-thirds of IT thought of it either, but that's another story. 
One of the few systems that fell over what fell down was the IT call forwarding to help desk mobiles. Again, government the phone company doesn't control call forwarding we do, now anyway can't remember what the answer was when I was there. But with the power out in the building, they can't do that this end right now. Still, plans in place for that the help desk at our HQ and Leeds can do that. Except. Lockdown. There are obviously some people working, but London and Leeds teams don't really need to talk much outside specific projects, and there was no one in working on those at that time. No one knew who was in and therefore who to call. So it's the general number. You are 83rd in the queue what? As both call forwarding to mobile and the London help desk were down, all calls from the hundreds of home workers were going to Leeds help desk stopping London talking to Leeds. There was a local IT team in the other London building, but no one working there that day, locked down again, with access to that specific system. In our wonderful age of technology, the problem was solved by one bloke having to take a cab across London to reroute the phones and to message all users just to log back on. We designed for nuclear strike, we just never considered COVID and a power outage. Use cold water to clean that off. It's my first day back at work, the guy who was supposed to be working today called in sick, not that it matters. Being who gives a crap Saturday I'm in jeans and a t-shirt. As opposed to casual Friday, or I don't want to be here, so I'm in pajama Sunday. First few tickets I handle with remote desktop connections from the Batcave. Printer not printing issue, a computer that was potato slow and hadn't been rebooted in weeks, she had just been locking her screen when she went home for the day. Great. Being Saturday I had a few hours, re-watched some Mandalorian on my phone with nothing better to do. Just after lunch someone puts in a ticket help to change the toner in a copier. The blue toner, there's a lot of these that get handled by people other than IT, it's not a super hard task, but we would rather just do it ourselves then. I'm sure many of you know why. Well normally it would be time to send an intern, but it's Saturday so there are no interns. I grab a fresh toner cartridge and carry it up with me. There's a guy dressed in his Saturday best, athletic short stars and stripes Walmart chic shirt. Except he's covered in toner powder as is much of the room. I'm having one of those moments where I'm struggling not to laugh. Did you call facility maintenance yet? I ask. He shakes his head no. I phone them in and report that they need to come up with a toner vac, aka electrostatic safe vacuum. Okay sir, listen to me very very closely. Cold water, like ice cold water sir I tell him. Putting an emphasis on cold. I put on gloves, I'm already wearing an N95 mask, so that's not a worry and tear the old cartridge out and start dusting the machine with a dry brush while I wait for facilities maintenance to come up. They show up and see the mess and give me a what the f dude look. Wasn't me. I'm not the one covered in toner powder he rolls his eyes and nods. Being a cool guy he vacuums up the inside of the copier first so I can get the new cartridge in. Not having anything better to do I help the guy clean up the rest of the mess. Because that's what I want to be doing is cleaning toner on a Saturday. I wrap the empty and the half-full broken cartridge up and in a trash bag to carry them down, I walk out into the hall and run into the guy who started this whole mess. I looked online and the internet said to use hot soapy water right away he tells me. I look at him and the blue toner from the color copier is smeared all over and obviously melted in. First thought going through my mind is that committed genocide in Smith Village. The guy used paper towels soaked in hot water to try to wash the toner off and of course it just smeared it around and got into his skin. Ah. Uh. I've never had that problem sir, I believe I told you to use cold water, I explained before walking out. Out of morbid curiosity I checked the bathroom, and I found the Smuff murder site at one of the sinks. Well I tried.